What's up, crypto fam? Welcome back to my Crypto Breakdown Whiteboard mini series. In today's video, we're gonna throw the flux down. So what is flux? That's a great question. Let me give you a high level crypto definition, which is gonna be way over your head. Then I'll break it down in layman terms. So even if you have zero crypto experience, you will be able to fully understand the potential of an asset like Flux. Flux is the very first decentralized computational network or decentralized Web3 node scaling infrastructure provider, if you will. So if you're like me and you have no clue what any of that means, don't worry, I got your back. By the end of this video, you're gonna understand every aspect about Flux. And PS, don't leave early. Towards the end of this video, I will tell you how you can enter my next $1,000 Flux giveaway. And special thanks to the Flux team for sponsoring this video. So I'm sure everybody watching this video has heard of Amazon. But what most people don't understand about Amazon is the fact that Amazon makes 65% of its income from AWS. That's pretty crazy, right? Amazon made $62.2 billion last year just from AWS alone. But what the heck is AWS and how does that relate to Flux? Great question. AWS is Amazon's cloud infrastructure. What that means is if you have a website like ESPN and every five minutes you have an author publishing a new blog or you're uploading a 500 gigabyte 6K video of last night's Lakers game, you need to have the ability to store all of that data. That means that you only have two options. You could build your own server, you would need to buy or rent a building, pay people to manage the server, or you could just rent server space from Amazon. I think it's pretty obvious why 99.99999% of businesses lease their cloud infrastructure from Amazon. Now, this is where Flux really starts to shine and why I say that Flux is the ultimate hybrid layer one and layer two blockchain. The Flux team knew that proof of work was the only option and it was a brilliant choice by the Flux team in my opinion. Flux layer one blockchain is secured by miners, which means that when it comes to security, proof of work versus proof of stake is night and day. Proof of work is a hundred times more secure and a million times more decentralized. What that means is that the amount of coins that you own don't dictate your voting power in the network. Every time one more miner starts mining Flux, the network becomes more decentralized. And if you don't leave early, at the end of the video, I'm gonna blow your mind when I show you how much hash power Flux has taken from Ethereum in the last 30 days. Let's just say the entire Flux ecosystem is 50% more decentralized this month than it was last month. And that's freaking bonkers. So that's Flux's layer one blockchain. It's perfectly designed layer one proof of work blockchain that is 100% decentralized. Now let's talk about Flux layer two hybrid node infrastructure. This is one of my favorites. In the intro of this video, I said that Flux was a decentralized computational network. But what does that actually mean? On the left side of the diagram, you can see Amazon and Amazon AWS. So in order for Amazon to provide cloud infrastructure to their clients, they need massive servers. So what Amazon does is Amazon buys a warehouse or a data center, if you will. They fill the building from floor to ceiling with servers slash hard drives. And these buildings can store millions of gigabytes worth of data. So on the right side, you can see Flux. What Flux does is they connect tens of thousands of individual computers together and they use the resources of all those computers combined to build a massive network of connected computers or virtual computers. So instead of having one building that's filled with 10,000 hard drives, Flux has 10,000 node operators who have one hard drive, but the Flux network links all of those hard drives together and compounds the network. It's freaking brilliant. Let me explain. Flux wanted to add utility to the Flux token. This means that they wanted to give Flux holders the ability to generate passive income by holding Flux. This is what creates more demand for the Flux token. Now, when I say the word node, I want you to think of a node like a virtual computer. This virtual computer has CPU, RAM, and hard drives. Node operators can either build their own node, buy a pre-configured node, or just lease a virtual computer from a website. So when I set up a Flux node, I rent or build my own virtual computer. I take my Flux, I stake a set amount of Flux inside my virtual computer, and then Flux turns this virtual computer into a quote unquote Flux node. What that means is that Flux can now compound the resources from the new node with all of the other nodes on the network. If you take a look at the screen here, you can see the virtual computer requirements based off the amount of Flux you own and how much flux you're willing to stake. If you own 1000 flux, you would need to rent a virtual computer that has eight gigabytes of RAM, 220 gigabytes of solid state hard drive space, and that would be a cumulus node. 
If you have 12,500 flux, you would need to rent a virtual computer that has 32 gigabytes of RAM, 440 gigs of solid state hard drive space, and that would give you a Nimbus node. If you have 40,000 coins of flux, you would need to rent a virtual computer that has 64 gigabytes of RAM and 888 gigabytes of solid state hard drive space. That would be your Stratus node. What that means is that people can take their flux, watch one YouTube video on how to set up a node, and start generating passive income. You see, every time somebody sets up a node, the Flux computational network gets bigger. For example, if we take a look at the Flux OS dashboard, we can see that there are currently 13,346 nodes that are running as of today. Now, if we take our mouse and we hover over the yellow part of the graph, you will see that it displays the exact number of Nimbus nodes that are currently running. You see, this shows us right now that there are 2,113 Nimbus nodes running on Flux. So if each Nimbus node has 32 gigabytes of RAM and 440 gigs of solid state hard drive space, what that means is if we take 440 and we times that by 2,113, that means that just from the Nimbus nodes alone, the Flux network now has 929,720 gigs worth of storage space that businesses can lease from Flux just like they do Amazon. You see, every time one more node goes online, the Flux network gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Computational networks at scale are going to change the world. No matter how much money Amazon makes, they will never be able to compete against a computational network at scale. No one warehouse will ever be able to store more data than a billion connected servers all over the world. This is why so many businesses are now using Amazon and Flux because Amazon servers are centralized. If Amazon has a giant data farm in Texas and a giant tornado comes through and destroys their building, your business might be down for a few hours or a few days while Amazon reroutes all of that data to a different location. Or even worse, the United States has rolling blackouts and multiple states lose power. You see the difference between Flux and Amazon is that Amazon is centralized and Flux is decentralized. Flux relies on people from all over the globe. Flux leases the storage space from node operators and pays them for their services in Flux. And this is why the Flux network has a 100% uptime. So imagine if you are a sports betting website and you take bets on different sporting events throughout the year. But there are a few times a year like Super Bowl Sunday where your business does 10,000 times more volume than any other day of the year. If your business generates 50% of its revenue in a 24 hour period, well then, if that 24 hour period just happens to be a day where Amazon servers go offline, you better hope that you got a backup plan because if you don't, you're gonna be screwed. That's the beauty of Flux. Their network never goes down and that's worth its weight in gold to some of these businesses. But I'm sure you're probably thinking to yourself, well, so what? If my website goes down for a few hours or a day, it's not gonna kill me. Why would I wanna go through the headache of moving my business off Amazon and onto Flux? Well, that's simple. What is the number one motivator or number one reason why people do anything? Money. If we take a look at the figures on the screen here, we can see the prices of the top legacy businesses and what they charge businesses to lease their cloud storage infrastructure from them. Amazon, $98.39. Google, $104.16. Microsoft, $30.36. Hensner, $21.86. And Flux, $10.31. That's pretty crazy, right? Amazon owns 33% of the market and Amazon is 900% more expensive than Flux. Microsoft owns 22% of the market and Microsoft is 300% more expensive than Flux. And Google owns 9% of the market and Google is 1000% more expensive than Flux. I mean, think about that for a second. Flux only costs your business $10 a month. <laughs> How many people in here have a $10 a month Planet Fitness membership that they never use? <laughs> I know I haven't been to the gym in the last few months, but when I need it or I wanna use their services, I can. Flux is so cheap that your business would be crazy to not use Flux. And that's exactly why we see projects like Kadena building and running their infrastructure on Flux. I think that by 2030, 95% of all crypto projects in the space will be running their websites on Flux. You see, that's the beauty in Flux and how servers work. Your business doesn't have to choose to run on Flux or run on Amazon. They can run on one or the other or they can run on both. A perfect example of that would be Kadena. If you go back and watch my interview with Kadena's president, Will Martino, you will hear Will explain Flux like a wetland. When the Kadena network was getting attacked last year, they had to call in all the troops because the attacker was spam attacking the network. When blockchains are running, the nodes are the ones who store a backup copy of the blockchain. 
the miners need to be able to communicate with the nodes in order to produce blocks. The cool part about that is the fact that miners can communicate to any node. It doesn't matter what node, they just need to be able to reach at least one node. So this attacker found a way to basically send a special type of transaction that would cause one individual node to lose sync with the network. One by one, he was targeting each node. So just imagine if the Kadena network has 1000 nodes up and running. If I'm an attacker and I want to crash the network, I need to take down every single node. And the second that that last node goes down, the blockchain would stop producing blocks. So one by one, the attacker started taking down all of Kadena's nodes. I'm sure you can imagine why it's mission critical that the attacker never has the ability to shut down every single node in the network. And that's exactly what the attacker did to Kadena. But lucky for Kadena, they had nodes running on Flux. What makes Flux so special is that the nodes are triple redundant. That means if you take one node down, another just spins back up. If one fails, another spins back up. So the hacker was legit playing whack-a-mole with Kadena nodes that were running on Flux. He was able to take down all of the Kadena nodes, but he couldn't take down the Kadena nodes that were running on Flux. Every time he took one down, another one just popped up in a completely different location. And this is why Will said that Flux is like a wetland. Picture the Mississippi River. During the raining season, when the river starts to overflow, if you live in a town that's close to the river, you need wetlands to divert that extra water or it will destroy your town. You might not always need the wetland, but when you do, boy oh boy, you are talking about the difference between life and death. So, do you think Kadena is ever going to stop paying Flux to run their nodes? <laughs> I highly doubt it. Now, if we take a look back at this chart, you can see Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. When you are paying these prices, you are getting one instance. That means your website is only stood up on one server. On Flux, you get three instances, which gives you double redundancy. If one goes down, you still have two backups. And that is what guarantees the Flux network should always maintain at the very least a 99.99% uptime, if not 100%. Now let's talk about three ways that you can generate passive income by interacting with the Flux ecosystem. Number one, you can set up a Flux miner. Just like Ethereum, Flux is GPU mineable. This makes the barrier to entry next to nothing. Anyone with a computer that has an eight gig graphics card can start mining Flux in less than 15 minutes. As of last week, Flux took over the number one spot on what's to mine as the most profitable cryptocurrency to mine. Just take a look at Flux's hash power. It's going straight parabolic right now. Why? Because Ethereum is straight kicking their miners to the curb. No mining farm wants to invest hundreds of millions of dollars into building a business and then five years later, they are being forced to shut it down. Flux is designed to pay out mining rewards for the next 125 years. That means that once miners make the switch from Ethereum to Flux, they will have a home for the rest of their lives. That's freaking huge. So any of you out there watching this that have a PC at home or better yet have a bunch of PCs at your business, you might as well watch my how to set up a Flux miner video and turn those bad boys into passive income generating machines. Links to that video is down in the description. Now, the second way you can earn passive income in the Flux ecosystem is by setting up a node like we talked about earlier in this video. There are four tiers. So for example, and don't quote me on these numbers, a Cumulus node, you rent a server for $10 and then you earn $25 a month in Flux. A Nimbus node, you might rent a server for $15 and you might make $35 per month. And a Stratus node, you might rent a server for $20 per month and you might make $100 a month in Flux. Dan likes to call node operators decentralized system administrators. I won't say it's the easiest thing in the world to run a node because there is a slight learning curve when it comes to being a node operator for the first time, but that's why the rewards are much higher for running a node versus just staking. And the newest addition to the Flux ecosystem was the launch of their Titan nodes. And this is my favorite part because people like myself who are not tech savvy, we don't need to know anything about virtual machines, servers, hard drives, or any of that nonsense. We can take our Flux, join the Titan node program, pool our crypto with a group of other people. They take that Flux plus the other people's Flux, they pull it together, and then they set up a big node. They do all of the hard work and in return for borrowing our Flux, we get to make 7% APY for doing absolutely nothing and the node operators get to keep the rest for themselves. 
It's a win-win in my book. What I love most about how Flux sets everything up is the fact that your Flux always stays in your wallet. The only difference with the self-ran nodes is the fact that you can turn them off anytime you want. You can then take your Flux and do whatever you want with it versus the Titan nodes where your Flux stays locked up for 30 days. But the most exciting part about that is the fact that your Flux always stays in your Zellcore wallet. How cool is that? Just look at other companies like Celsius. How many people here lost all of their crypto because they staked it on Celsius and now Celsius has custody of all their crypto? That will never happen on Flux. Your crypto is always in your wallet and you are the only one who owns the private keys to that wallet. Now what's even more bad ace about that is the fact that Flux is now running validators for seven different projects. So when you are mining on Flux, you're not just mining Flux. You're mining Flux plus seven different coins all at the same time. So picture a bank account. If you have a Chase bank account and your bank account has a set routing number, if I have a Chase bank account and you have a Chase bank account, it's very easy for me to send crypto from my bank to your bank because we both have the same bank. Crypto ecosystems are the same way. If you have an Ethereum wallet and I have an Ethereum wallet, well, it's very easy for me to send you crypto. But if you have a Solana wallet and I have an Ethereum wallet, our quote unquote routing numbers don't match. When Flux launches a parallel asset, what the Flux blockchain does is it spins up a side blockchain. That blockchain has its own Flux node, which is then paired with a Solana node and bam, now the Flux ecosystem is integrated with the Solana ecosystem and you can now store any token from the Solana ecosystem in your Zellcore wallet. You see, validators are like miners. But to run a validator, you need a giant bag of coin. On Solana, you need 5,000 coins to run a Solana validator. 99% of retail investors can't afford to run them. But every proof of stake blockchain needs more validators because that's what decentralizes their network. In proof of work blockchains, the more miners there are, the more decentralized the network becomes. In proof of stake blockchains, the more validators there are, the more decentralized the network becomes. So when these other blockchains want to run more validators, they can now come to Flux to do so. So Flux has the ability to make every single proof of stake blockchain more decentralized. And it's also a huge win for projects like Ergo, who don't have a sexy mainstream adoption crypto wallet. Now that Flux is integrated with Ergo, anyone who holds Ergo can use Zellcore as their main crypto wallet. Because of the Ergo Flux parallel asset, Zellcore wallets can now hold any new coin that launches on the Ergo blockchain. Not just coins, but NFTs also. How cool will that be when you have one crypto wallet that can hold NFTs from any ecosystem? That's pretty dope if you ask me. And you see, this is why I say that Flux's Zellcore wallet is the holy grail of crypto wallets. It's integrated with every single crypto ecosystem, or at the very least, the big layer one blockchains anyway. Cadena, Ethereum, Binance, Solana, Avalanche, Tron, and now Ergo. Flux also has three more ecosystems they plan to integrate with by Q1 of 2023. Now what's even more bad ace is the fact that Flux can also provide you with cloud infrastructure for your website as well. That means that anytime one of these new crypto projects launches, they need to build a website. Like we stated above, they only have a few options, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, or Flux. Now, if you're a crypto project and you build your website on top of Amazon servers and the United States government, or better yet, the Canadian government makes up a law and they say it's illegal for crypto websites to run in their country, well then, the Canadian government can get a warrant and force Amazon to remove your website from their servers. AKA they can de-platform you from your own website at any time for no good reason. On Flux, they can't shut you down because your website is running on a decentralized server and those servers are not controlled by any one person. This is what makes decentralized crypto projects like Flux so powerful. Everything you do on Flux creates more of a demand for the underlying asset called Flux. Anytime anybody stands up a node, they need more Flux. Anytime anybody uses the Zellcore wallet, they need Flux. Anytime anybody buys Flux and stakes it to earn passive income, they need Flux. Anytime anybody wants to stand up their backend on Flux, they need Flux. Anytime anybody wants to build their website on Flux and they want to add third-party widgets to their website, they need to rent those widgets and pay for them with Flux. This is what creates massive demand for Flux. And the more businesses that use Flux, the more websites that get built on top of Flux, the bigger the Flux ecosystem becomes, the more demand there is for the Flux asset. And this is exactly why we are in one of the worst crypto bear markets slash crypto winners that the crypto space has ever seen. And Flux is outperforming 100% of crypto assets in the top 100. And yes, you heard that right. Not 90%, not 95%, but 100%. 
In the last 12 months, the price of Flux is up by 575%. Talk about a store of value. There is a reason why 99% of crypto investors' portfolios are down 95% right now. They invested in a bunch of shack coins that have no real-world value, and there is no demand for that underlying asset. Either way, their portfolio is still down 95%. Anyone who invested in Flux one year ago, as of today, they would be up 575%. The best part about Flux is the fact that Flux is just getting started. Hey you, do you want to win $1,000 in Flux or do you want to learn more about making generational wealth by investing in cryptocurrency? Then do me a favor, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, retweet the link pinned to the top of the comments. Over the next 90 days, I will be doing $1,000 worth of Flux giveaways to my subscribers who shared this content. So retweet the link and come join us in my live stream on my second YouTube channel. Good vibes always, crypto fam.